country. So it was nice hearing you. Uh, Andre started giving us a historical view of how teacher education is seen here in Brazil. And uh, she brought points as from methods to critical approach nowadays. And I think it connects with Brian as well, because from your talks, from Andrea Huberval and Brian talks, I could see, that's my view, that Brazil and Canada have some uh, points in common when dealing with teacher education and this worries about developing critical view uh, not only for the teachers but for the teacher as an educator because uh, that's something that I consider as teachers for example in my case I hadn't had a critical education I hadn't had this opportunity of developing it as a student and I think many teachers in Brazil and maybe in Canada, I don't know, uh, didn't have this opportunity as well from what I gather. And this is something that we need to work on and I don't know the answers for, every, for all these uh, facts that come to us, yes? Uh, and when Jonathan talked a little bit, uh, by the way, I'd love to hear what you know about Ciencias Sem Fronteiras <laughs> because maybe, I don't know how it is arriving in Canada, yes? Uh, but we have a reality here and uh, this I have some concerns because uh, my school delivers TOEFL IBT test which is asked uh, for the students who want to study abroad uh, we receive, we are receiving students from all over Brazil, not only from Campo Grande. And what I can see is that, uh, because as a researcher now, yes, I try to ask, where are you from, what did, where did you study? And most of them have already studied at a private course. And the, the students who are traveling abroad, who are having this opportunity, uh, most of them don't come from public schools uh, here in Brazil and by the way I had a great, a very good surprise one student uh, uh, to whom I talked talked to me that she learned English on her own and she came from a public school and she was a strong candidate to go abroad but it was one in hundreds, okay? Uh, so that's something to worry about and I think Ciência Sem Fronteira is the kind of top-down thing like let's solve English problem in Brazil uh, from a top-down uh, attitude or uh, from the government because now people have to learn English because money is available for them to go abroad, yes? That's something that I, I see and I don't know how it's gonna, there are some steps being taken uh, but I see that many people are looking, for me it's good as a capitalist, yes, neoliberalist, uh, as I have the school, I'm receiving people that want to prepare for the test, that want to improve their English, but then it comes again the belief, not only the on regular schools in Brazil, but in private institutions that have the secret of teaching English as a second language, yes. So these are my points for this talk. In terms of questions, I have, um, uh, uh, I also appreciate Brian's talk and texts when he gives us tips on how to work with teachers on what kind of texts you bring to uh, develop their critical view. So I really appreciate uh, your presentation. You are always given uh, some tips and I used uh, one of these tips with some students working on reading images. Not with, uh, uh, we worked with teachers and then we developed a contest uh, working with some pictures and some texts uh, in English and it was really good to see 
uh, the results, okay? After I can share something more with you, okay? My questions. Uh, for Andrea, I would like to ask what is the difference between using critical literacy in teacher education and doing teacher education for social justice, okay? Because you mentioned social justice, which is quite a new term for me, quite a new concept, okay? Hubert Val, what is the contribution of language policy to teacher education? Um, Brian, Canada English, is it a center English or periphery English? In this context, uh, how Canada is seen? And for Jonathan, I'd like to listen to your view of Ciencias Sem Fronteira. Uh, what is there for you in Canada? I don't know if you met some students from Brazil. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so my my comments are just uh, some questions um, uh, I would like to ask all the presenters here, and um, because the presentations were all thought-provoking, and I think it would be interesting for us to discuss a little bit more on these topics. So, um, talking about Andreas and Huberval's presentation, so the question, I guess, for both of you would be, so what are the advantages or disadvantages of having teacher education here in Brazil within the umbrella term called critical uh, literacy or critical uh, teacher education? Because I guess it was Hubert Valls mentioning that there are many definitions and she mentions different uh, um, ways of uh, uh, working with uh, critically uh, with teachers. So are there any advantages of uh, having different uh, possibilities even if they are not uh, the ones uh, you would like or you think it's, uh, it would be good for, for our context here in Brazil. And um, Brian's mentioned about the, the course themes uh, in one of uh, your slides. And uh, before that, I guess you mentioned that it would be very interesting if we implement project goals and listening to the teachers. And you presented some of the themes. Um, what if the themes are selected by us uh, teacher educators and not by the teachers who want to, to go through the course, to, through the teacher education course? And um, if they selected, what if, if the topics, the themes they selected are the traditional ones we usually have in, in, in books? So, and then? And when Jonathan was uh, talking about uh, my, uh, I was thinking of uh, how can language policy can take into account or consideration <coughs> less dependence on uh, the epistemic aspects uh, Brian mentioned, and uh, as well as Andreas and Huberval's concerns with a more critical, down-to-earth um, teacher education programs. And uh, my, my last question, I guess, it's for, for us to, um, to think over. How much, uh, as Brazilians, how much of what we've been doing, if we take into consideration locally, so we, if we want to um, consider our local needs, uh, so how much of what, what we've been doing focusing locally uh, whatever definition we have of being critical uh, doesn't marginalize or promote self-marginalization if we compare of what we've been do what we've been doing with a mainstream way of thinking, doing, and acting. So this is my 
And the last question. So, Sergio, say that again. The last question. Uh, how much of what we've been doing? So, if we focus on um, our local concerns, needs. So, if we focus on on, on this locally, and uh, within the definition we have of uh, being critical, if what we do doesn't um, marginalize or self or we are self mar marginalizing uh, compared to the mainstream uh, ways of doing acting or uh, promoting critical uh, teacher education 